Um, so I, I've got one or two more. Um, uh, the, the last one, is, is th this question here, I feel like is always um, kind of a reflection point as well. Um, I, I try to formulate my interviews in, in such a, like a circular way where the beginning feeds the end and then loops back around and it all kind of makes sense at the end. I, that's what I try for anyway. But um, I feel like it's almost always true that uh, the early influences of an artist always have some kind of role or, or in the shape of an artist's career, so to speak. And I mean, looking back on how much, uh, looking back, how much do you feel that your upbringing, not only in church, but also in East Texas, um, how did those experiences shape your life and your career uh, from a reflection standpoint? Well, for sure. Uh, going back to the beginning of our conversation, when we were talking about all of the different houses that I would be able to go to, and, and they were all family who lived close by and around us, ride our bikes from place to place and get to hear all of the, the different styles of country music. And not only that, but let's go back to that 70s and, and early 80s time frame of country music. I really feel like it was that time when artists were allowed to be themselves. They were allowed to be artists. And so I feel like there was not a whole lot of music that was uh, in the box, so to speak, that there was a lot of creative, um, you know, uh, ability that, um, you know, was afforded to the artists. And so I feel like that was a really great time frame to grow up in musically uh, as, as a country follower. And so obviously, you know, a lot of those uh, guys and girls were, were big influences that I mentioned before. But at the same time, when I started this, you know, a lot of those guys and girls, our heroes, were still alive and, and out playing music. And so we got to open for Willie, and we've been able to open for Merle. And we got to hang out and, with Charlie Daniels, and, and I got to meet Dolly Parton. And I've got to, you know, they, so many, these were our heroes. They were, you know, my grandmother thought that I had made it. Mm -hmm. Like, I was, I was on the fast track to start them when I opened up for Merle Haggard. That was her favorite. She loved it, man. And so... Obviously, all of those uh, guys and, and ladies played a major part, but I feel like as I continue to evolve musically and grow in my youth and the uh, music that we were able to listen to was over a broad spectrum. It just wasn't in the country vein. And so whether it would have been rock and roll or pop music, you know, I felt like those all, uh, probably not evenly, but they all uh, you know, were parts of, of my growth in my life and what I do now. And then also to get into the Texas music and to think about all of the great artists who had come before and had put, you know, their stamp on that, right? All right, we're talking about still the Willies and the Waylands and the guys who came back from Nashville and said, hey, we're going to do this our own way, 70s and 80s. And then the, the Billy Joe Shavers and uh, Guy Clark, Pound Fan Fan, Emmy Lou. Uh, God, there's just so many of them. That, that were a big part of that, too. And then Robert O'Keen, and then we get into the Pats and the Corys and the Ragweeds and the Reckless and the... So many, you know. man. It's just so yeah. many. And Mike McClure. I mean, you think about it, like, he's still... Um, I listen to the stuff that he's doing with the Great Divide now and how they've come back together and the music that they're putting out. And, um, you know, just so happy for him. And, you know, I was, I was once the young guy, right? Mm -hmm. And so now I have tenure. Now I've been here. I've done this for a while. And, and while my plight and my path doesn't look like anyone else's, it's mine. And if you ask me at the end of the day, do I, I regret any of it? And would I go back and change any of it? Uh, do I wish this or that? I would say no, man. I've been able to be myself. I've been able to do the things that I love. You know, Ray Wiley Hubbard told me really early on, he said, be careful what you write, because you just might have to sing it the rest of your life. You learn those mm -hmm. lessons, and you listen to guys like him who are unique and individually themselves. And so man, I love the fact that people are drawn to that, and that's what I want it to be. And so all of those artists mentioned from the beginning of that to, uh, to now are a big part of really who I am. And now you are one of them, uh, without no. doubt. You are one of them. In my opinion, you are one of the uh, one of the icons in in the Texas music scene. Um, and so you mentioned all of these amazing names. I put your name right up there with all of them. 
Um, and I'm um, just uh, really, uh, really proud to have you on the show uh, for the second time. I know it's not the same show, but um, we, we've talked before. Um, this last question that I have for you, actually, you know what, before we get to that, uh, is there anything you're working on? What's in the future for you? Is there new CDs coming, new albums? Yeah, I've been writing a lot, uh, and I have a lot of material. I have enough to make more than one record. Um, I'm still working on that. Next year is the 20-year anniversary of the release of Conviction. Uh, we're obviously going to uh, play off of that next year. We're going to re-release um, you know, Conviction as well. And then I probably will go into the studio, recut a couple of these songs, maybe even with some of my friends uh, from the music scene, Ooh. and uh, maybe, maybe re-release a, a couple of those songs and get those uh, out there again. You know, time goes by so fast, as we've talked about on this program today, and it's hard to believe that it's been 20 years since Conviction came out. Uh, I still feel like I have a lot to say and a lot uh, to sing um, and, and, to, and to give to people um, I just, I'm still stuck somewhat in that old school world of mentality of putting a record out every two or three or four years well, and not putting music out constantly. And well, the I, kids I are grown to... now too, so you got a lot more time on your hands as well. Yeah, but less money. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very good point. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> uh, uh,